Hey, this is Hans from Dakota Angler and Outfitter. In this video, we're tying the split back Betis nymph. This is one of our best nymphs year round. Catches fish when other flies stop working. Um, you tie it in sizes 16 to 22. In these smaller sizes, a lot of times you can't find a two extra long nymph hook that will um, be available in those smaller sizes like the the 20s and 22s especially. So you can use just a dry fly hook. This is a Daiichi 1100 with a good wide gap. We have a black nickel tungsten bead on. This is a size 16 but again you can tie it down to 22s. Using brown olive 70 denier ultra thread. Started right behind the bead going to the back of the hook. You could also just use a regular olive thread. For the tail, we're going to take some partridge fibers. And a little clump of partridge fibers. I'm actually using Brahma hen dyed olive. You could also use those partridge dyed olive, but anything that's similar to those types of fibers in olive will work well for that. Or for this fly. What we want is a tail that's about equal to the length of the hook shank. Tie that in right on top of the hook. Advance your thread forward tying those down. And then we're going to trim off our excess. Once that's tied off and the excess is <clears throat> gone, we'll tie in our ribbing material. I'm going to use clear micro tubing. You can also use monofilament. And tie that along the side of the shank up near the bead. Stretch it tight and wrap my thread back. So now we got our ribbing material. For the body, you're going to use an olive dubbing. You don't need to be too choosy about what dubbing you use, but on the smaller flies, it actually helps to have something that you're comfortable dubbing fairly fine with. You don't want to make this fly way too bulky. So I've got an olive nature spirit fine natural dubbing here. Nice little tapered noodle of dubbing on there and then just start advancing forward. We're not going to go all the way to the bead but kind of go back and forth so you can build up a little little taper as you go. And then when you get up behind the bead you got to leave yourself a fair amount of room for the thorax. So you know if you looked at this you're you're not quite a third uh, of the remaining hook shank behind the bead you're going to leave over. So we got plenty of room. So I'll take off my excess dubbing. And what I, whatever I can't strip off I'll just use up. Okay, now I'm in that open space behind the bead. I'll take my micro tubing and I'm going to stretch it fairly tight and make my ribbing over the dubbing. Once I've gotten to my thread, I'll tie off a couple more wraps just for good measure and we'll take off the excess micro tubing. Okay, now we're ready to do the wing case. This is what really makes this fly stand out. For the wing case you're going to need two black goose biots. You're going to tie them in by the tips. You can tie them in one at a time or two at a time, but you want one kind of on the near side of the hook. And then we're going to tie it. Whoops, slipped out on me. There we go. And then we want one on the far side of the hook. So if we look at it from the top, what we're going to end up with is something like that. Next, you can choose your color of foam here. 
I'm going to do an olive thin fly foam or razor foam rather. Tie that in right on the top of the hook. All right. Now we'll take a little more of our dubbing. You're not going to need much because you've already built up a fair amount of bulk on that thorax tying in these materials. So a small amount of dubbing. You're going to need a little working room behind the bead so don't, don't get too much going on behind the bead there else you're going to end up with too much bulk and it's going to be hard to finish the fly. So now we're going to add some legs and we're going to go back to the partridge feather or again I'm using Brahma hen but either olive dyed Brahma or or partridge will work just fine. And there's a couple ways to do the legs but I'll do the little V trick where we take a feather we cut out the center of the feather so we leave two little clumps And I'll lay that like so over the bead. And just do a loose wrap to capture first. And a couple more wraps to make sure it's on there. And then I'll just pull the feather till we get the length of fibers we want for our legs. There we go. Get nice and close and trim out the excess. There we go. Okay, <clears throat> now to finish the fly, we're going to pull the foam over, to the, over the top. When we do that, then we're going to tie it off. Trim off the excess. So now you've got a little green spot down the center. And now you can take your biots one at a time, pull them over, tie down, pull over, and tie down. What you'll get are little black stripes overlapping the edges of the foam. And what that does, it mimics that wing case opening up and the, the emerging wing coming through. Once those are tied in and tied off, go ahead and trim off the excess. and do a whip finish. Just got your whip finish done. It's not a bad idea to do a little bit of head cement on this fly. You've done all that work to make a nice wing case making that nice split back look. You don't want to have that come undone after a few casts. So put a little head cement right on the thread wraps and you're all set to go. That's the split back betas nymph or split case betas nymph however you want to call it but same thing. I like this fly a lot with a tungsten bead but you can tie it without a tungsten bead if you don't need it quite as heavy but this is just a cracker pattern it really really catches fish tie some of these up and fish them in your home waters thanks for watching we've got lots of other videos on our website flyfishsd.com